What will we eat in the future? The question is legitimate because according to some studies, it is very likely that in 2100, the Earth will be inhabited by over 10 billion people, an exorbitant number when compared to the population of the early 1900s, when just 1 billion and a half people lived on our planet. It will therefore be necessary to develop new technologies capable of allowing the production of large quantities of food in order to feed everyone. Food Technology – What We Will Eat in the Future In recent years, our eating habits have undergone numerous changes. New ingredients are gradually added to our recipes, such as chia seeds and avocado that our grandmothers would never have imagined. Given the rapid changes we are also experiencing in terms of cooking, what should we expect for the future? Let us know in the comments. The progressive and uncontrolled growth of the world population will inevitably cause environmental problems, such as global warming and the greenhouse effect, which will soon add to the exhaustion of livelihoods. Some studies show that in 2050, the amount of water available to a single person will decrease by 70%, and the territories intended for pastures and cattle breeding will soon be mowed down by urbanization. In a catastrophic but fairly predictable scenario, many species of animals, which today are generally consumed by man, will go extinct. And as has already happened for many fish, Earth's wonderful biodiversity will soon be at risk. Hence the need to do something about it, with substitutes for meat, fish, and vegetables. Alternative solutions that often make us wrinkle our noses. Let's see some. Insects Eating a plate of ants, cockroaches, or grasshoppers might seem like a horror movie scene, and many of you will surely be thrilled with disgust. But for many people, it is entirely reality, especially in China, Africa, Indonesia, and some parts of America. Indeed, historically eating insects, or entomophagy, is not a novelty in the human diet. The Egyptian pharaohs already considered them delicacies, especially grasshoppers and locusts. While for the ancient Romans, they represented a bit of a whim, and in fact, they required them just to feel special and eccentric. But why do we eat insects? Because they are high in protein and low in carbohydrates and fats. According to a study by the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations FAO, as far as nutritional values are concerned, insects represent highly respectable foods when compared to meat. Data in hand, the protein content of veal is around 22%, while the protein content of locusts and grasshoppers varies from 18 to 32%. That of crickets varies from 8 to 25%, and for bugs, we are talking about numbers around 15%. Furthermore, their production is cheap and involves lower levels of environmental pollution than farms. According to the same study, the environmental impact for the production of food based on insects is considerably lower than that for the production of food derived from animals. Red meat, for example, it is estimated that 4,300 liters of water and 150 kilograms of carbon dioxide are required to produce one kilo of veal. Instead, to produce the same quantity of proteins in silkworms, only 15 kilograms of carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere. Finally, according to another study by the European Food Safety Authority, eating insects would expose us less to certain diseases than the continuous consumption of red meat. On the other hand, however, in addition to the disgust factor, it is also important to evaluate the fact that many food allergies are related to proteins, so we must also evaluate whether the consumption of insects can trigger allergic reactions. Such reactions can be caused by individual sensitivity to insect proteins by cross-reacting with other allergens or by residual allergens from insect feed, for example, gluten. Algae Algae provides numerous advantages, in particular microalgae, because they must not be grown on arable land but in seawater and have a high yield and can effectively contribute to the production of food because they are rich in fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. An oil microalgae can accumulate up to 50 to 70 percent of oil, and under certain growth conditions, the protein content can reach values close to 60 percent. Furthermore, by changing the exposure to light and fertilization, the accumulation of carbohydrates can reach 60 percent, values similar to those of wheat. 
The microalgae then supplied the long-chain omega-3 and omega-6 fat acids, the precious fats typical of fish, which have proved useful in the prevention of cardiovascular diseases. But the flavor? Similar to chicken meat. According to studies by FAO and UNICEF, one kilogram of spirulina per day would be able to integrate the nutrition of 1,000 children, effectively fighting the scourge of malnutrition, which derives from a diet consisting only of starchy foods in 300 million children worldwide. In addition, they have a high content of trace elements, in particular calcium, iron, and phosphorus. Calcium is indicated for osteoporosis, and trace minerals such as iodine are valuable for counteracting thyroid disorders. They also have vitamins, first of all, B12, essential for the body, which is unavailable in the terrestrial plant world. Not too bad for a single-celled organism. Rich in minerals and vitamins, algae are beneficial foods for our body, especially useful against gastritis and intestinal disorders. These foods can compensate for nutritional deficiencies. For example, kelp is used in case of anemia. Algae enhance the activities of white blood cells, improving the immune system. If you haven't already tasted them, would you like to try seaweed? Let us know in the comments. Artificial Fish and Meat In recent years, some researchers have found a way to produce meat without slaughtering any living being. But starting from the cell of a live bovine that is then extracted and developed into artificial tissues and muscles. This meat therefore has the same flavor as the natural one we already know, but its production does not involve killing animals. It takes 9 to 21 days to produce meat in the laboratory from animal stem cells. It seems that this type of meat does not present health risks linked to bacterial contamination or the presence of saturated fats in large quantities. Furthermore, in this way, the negative consequences for the environment related to intensive farming are avoided. The first tasting of a hamburger born in the laboratory dates back to 2013. It will take a few more years, however, to buy this meat at the supermarket. It is also possible to artificially produce fish and seafood. In the past, scientists at Toro College in New York managed to create small fish fillets by dipping the muscles of the goldfish in a serum. There is still a little time left, but would you ever get used to the idea of eating meat produced in the laboratory? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to join the channel, leave us a like, and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality. Medusi Jellyfishes appear to be candidates as a mainstream solution to the dramatic depletion of the oceans and drastic reduction of the most commercially exploited species of fish, crustaceans, and mollusks. Jellyfish swim undisturbed in the sea because humans do not eat them and prefer to hunt other types of fish products such as cod or tuna. Therefore, starting to consume jellyfish could be a solution to control the balance of the marine ecosystem. A traditional dish in China and various Southeast Asian countries, with over 400 million kilos of jellyfish caught for food every year, the business continues to attract new followers. Due to multiple factors, from climate change to the decimation of sea turtles, one of their rare predators, jellyfish are expanding dangerously in the world's seas, causing increasingly evident commercial damage and exporting deadly species to new corners of the planet. In the U.S. state of Georgia, jellyfish fishing is a flourishing industry. Statistics are lacking for now, but it is worth a few million dollars and regulated for only two years. It is now the third largest fishing industry in the state, after crabs and shrimp. In Europe, they are not yet authorized for food use, yet they are a source of proteins, minerals, vitamins, and collagen, and low in calories and fat, contain precious elements such as amino acids, magnesium, and potassium have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Have you ever tasted jellyfish, or would you like to taste them? Let us know in the comments. Edible Water Bottles Drink the water first, and then eat the bottle. This is the innovative idea developed in 2014 by three Spanish designers, Garcia Gonzalez, Guillaume Couche, and Pierre Paslier, with a view to eliminating the problem of getting rid of plastic bottles. The concept is as simple as it is extraordinary, a very thin transparent bubble in which to transport water. The innovative bottle was called OO and consists of a double membrane formed by extracts of vegetable algae. For this reason, it can be eaten in a complete safety or possibly 100% composted. The OO bottle is created through spherification, 
a culinary process typical of molecular gastronomy that solidifies the outer surface of food while keeping the inside liquid. As Gonzalez explained, the outer part is made up of a double membrane of lipids and proteins, of which we have long sought the perfect recipe, which would allow the substances of the membrane not to be conveyed inside. For now, the OO bottle is only a prototype, not having the classic bottle shape yet. It resembles a soap bubble, nor does it taste good. However, the three Spanish designers are convinced that they can improve the product quickly and then put it on the market. The cost of the bottle? Only two cents. 3D printed foods. It is likely that in the future we will eat foods printed using 3D printers. A team from Columbia University is experimenting with a mechanical arm capable of 3D printing a recipe using fresh ingredients free of preservatives and substances contained in packaged products. In addition to having to find new types of food for an increasingly large population, it is essential that foods are produced in a more sustainable way from an environmental point of view. And here comes the startup Square Roots, founded by Kimball Musk, Elon Musk's brother. The idea behind is roughly this to revolutionize food supply chains to meet the needs of the population, without forgetting those of the planet. According to a study by the UN Food and Agricultural Association, about one-third of the food produced in the world is wasted because it deteriorates during transport from the place where it is produced to where it is consumed. The reduction of this waste and therefore the need to produce food as close as possible to where it is consumed is part of the objectives of Square Roots whose headquarters are in Brooklyn, New York. The company has in fact developed particular modules which from the outside are somewhat reminiscent of containers capable of allowing the growth day and night and without pesticides of various plants such as mint, basil and leafy green vegetables. Internally, however, the modules are designed for hydroponics, i.e. the adoption of alternative cultivation techniques that do not involve the use of the soil, but the use of a substrate with the action of water and nutrients dissolved in it. There are two major types of hydroponic cultivation, the one that uses the substrate or mixtures of perlite, inert substance that derives from obsidian, a type of expanded volcanic rock, sand, expanded clay, etc., which is moistened and irrigated with water and nutrients, and hydroponic cultivation without substrate, where the roots of the plants are immersed in the flow of the nutrient solution, composed of water and dissolved substances. Although plants such as rice, water lilies, or carnivorous plants can adapt well in poorly oxygenated or even stagnant environments, most plants show difficulty in adapting to environments where there is a lack of oxygen. With this system, it is possible to start an indoor or outdoor cultivation, horizontally as in classic crops, but also vertically, a method that allows you to save space. In addition, hydroponic agriculture allows greater control of the management of water and nutritional resources, and a certain saving of water thanks to the recovery and reuse of the water flow, which is collected after use and recycled for a new irrigation cycle. All this also brings benefits to the environment. With hydroponic crops, it is possible to significantly reduce both the waste of nutrients and water dispersion, but also the use of herbicides and chemicals thus providing to be a decidedly type of crop more sustainable than the traditional one on Earth. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality.